welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lisa, also known as La Dolce Lisa. And today's video is highly requested because I've been making macarons a lot lately and I've been getting a lot of comments, at least on Instagram, on please post a video, I really wanna learn how to make these. Now these are so difficult to make, but the steps are easy enough that I feel like I can teach you guys. And I know that it really does take a lot of patience, a lot of preparation, a lot of trial and error, but sooner or later, you'll be able to master the French macaron like a pro. I'm going to be using the Italian meringue method that actually a lot of French pastry chefs like La Dude, Pierre Hermé, they use this method to make their macarons taste delicious. Most recipes have very similar ingredients, just maybe slightly different quantities, but it is basically so simple in terms of ingredients. is ground almonds. I will not be grinding these myself. These are just bought pre-ground. So just simple ground almonds. And this is 150 grams and an equal part 150 grams of icing sugar. I always like to use a fresh batch of icing sugar. So don't be using one that has been in your cupboard for who knows how long. Get a fresh batch and use that because it does help. As well, we are going to be needing eggs. Now the egg whites for this recipe are measured using a scale, much like the ground almonds and the icing sugar. You really do need a scale to measure your ingredients because like most people say, baking is an exact science and that is specifically true when it comes to making macarons. You really need to weigh everything very, very precisely. Now these egg whites are actually aged and what it means to age egg whites is that what we basically do is separate the eggs from the yolk. Now the separated egg whites are in a Tupperware in the fridge for about a week, the day that I need to use them. I take them out and I leave them to be room temperature and the quantity is 55 grams of egg whites and another 55 grams of egg whites. So 110 grams divided. And we are going to be using these in different steps, which I will show you along the way. One of the last ingredients that we're going to be using in this recipe is just regular fine granulated sugar or caster sugar, whatever you like. 150 grams and to that, when it comes time, we're going to be adding 37 grams of water. This happens to be bottled water because that works best for this recipe. So I would recommend just using any bottled water or distilled water that you like, but you need 37 grams of bottled water. Also, it is optional, but I of course like to use coloring for the shells. Um, what I recommend when it comes to using food coloring is not to use liquid food coloring, but rather a powder or like what I have here, a gel. Gel food coloring is great because it is concentrated so it won't be liquidy and thin out your macaron mixture. Liquid is the enemy of this mixture so we don't want to be adding any extra liquid where we don't need to. So gel icing is great. But basically these ingredients and these few tools will guarantee you success when it comes to making the perfect macaron. So I'm going to be adding my almond mixture to the icing sugar mixture. So now with that added in, we are going to be taking our sifter and sifting this mixture through. And what I like to do on my kitchen scale, I like to measure it out. That way I know exactly how much almond or sugar mixture I am going to be losing sifting this through. That way I can add it back in and keep sifting. But let's just sift this through. You'll find that you will lose quite a bit of the almond mixture, but that's okay because we are going to be every now and then adding a bit back in. So a bit more sugar and a bit more almond mix to whatever we happen to be losing. Okay, so my first sift through, I have quite a bit of the mixture left over. Why this is important is because we want our shells to look nice and smooth on top. And if we were to keep this in, it would look lumpy and bumpy and we don't want that. So I took out almost 15 grams of ingredients. I'm gonna toss this, sift some back through, and then we're gonna keep sifting. Okay, so I will say this is about the fifth time that I'm sifting this through. <laughs> We just want to make sure that we have the ingredients precise and combined. There we go, exactly 300 grams of the almonds and the icing sugar. Okay, so this mix we're going to set aside just for a second. Right now, the egg whites. Like I said, it is about 110 grams divided, so 55 grams each. One of these 55 grams is going to go directly into this KitchenAid stand mixer. 
We are going to leave that aside until we need it. This whole process is going to happen pretty fast, so you wanna make sure that you're nice and prepared and ready to go. Next up, the food coloring step. The gel food coloring, like I said, is great because it is not liquid, it is a thicker paste. A little bit goes a long way, so I'm just gonna get a little bit on my knife and put this right into the other 55 grams of egg whites. I want my colors to be nice and pale. Of course, if you want yours to be way more vibrant, you can, of course, add more. Now, right now, you won't necessarily be able to see what the color is going to look like, but everything from this point on is going to go quite fast, so let's get ready. Right now, I'm going to be adding these colored egg whites into this mixture of the almond flour and the icing sugar. You can, of course, skip the food coloring step and just leave your macarons a plain color. That is totally fine. Now, I'm going to be giving this mix a quick mix just to combine everything. This is almost going to look like a little bit of a colored paste. So now that this has just combined together, I'm going to quickly either put plastic wrap or in this case, just a cloth over the top. We just don't want the mix to dry out. So we're setting that aside until we need it. Now for the next step, we have the regular white caster sugar, granulated sugar. And now to that, we are going to be adding the 37 grams of distilled or spring water right into a pan that is going to be ready to go on the stove. So adding the water. Now we're going to get into action here. This is going to go right on the stove at a medium to low heat. I'm going to be using my thermometer. So once the sugar syrup reaches about 45 to 55 degrees Celsius, that is when I'm going to be turning on my KitchenAid and leaving that on a level six speed and allowing the egg whites to whip up and become nice and frothy. So while that is going, the sugar is also going and we are waiting for that to reach 118 degrees Celsius. Once your sugar, a couple minutes later, has reached 118 degrees Celsius, we're going to be moving quickly. We are going to take the sugar off of the stove and with the KitchenAid still running, we are going to be pouring that sugar syrup right into the frothy egg whites, lightly pouring it in a slow and steady stream, carefully going right in between the wall and the blade. Once all your sugar is poured in, we're going to be turning the KitchenAid to a level eight speed, and we are going to be mixing that for about two minutes, I would say, or until your mix reaches about 40 to 50 degrees Basically, when your bowl is no longer burning hot and you can lightly touch it, it should be ready about two minutes later. At this stage, usually I might turn it on to a level 10 and just give it a quick 20 to 30 second whip just to make sure that this meringue is nice and frothy. This is an Italian meringue method, so we basically made an Italian meringue with the egg whites. The egg whites have become quite thick. They're not quite stiff peaks, but they are about medium two stiff peaks. Now I'm covering this almond paste mixture right here. I'm going to be putting about, maybe about a dollop or so, I would say about 20 to 30% of the mix right in here. Fold that in. At this stage, we don't have to be too gentle about it. We are slowly introducing the meringue to the paste, giving it a couple folds. Once it looks about incorporated, we can add the rest of this Italian meringue. The macaronage process is very important that you don't over or under mix. Usually when you see all the colors combine, it's perfect. If you don't have colors, you kind of want to hold up this spatula and make a figure eight. If you can make a nice figure eight without it breaking off too soon or being overly runny, you're good. This is probably one of the more difficult steps because if you overmix, it will be a disaster, and if you undermix, it will also be a disaster. It's probably a little bit better to undermix. Now at this stage, I already have a piping bag right in here. This is actually a vase because this is a huge piping bag. I'm going to try to add the entire mix to the piping bag at a time. That way there are no leftovers. I'm just going to be sealing the top. Now, if you get a little bit extra out, that's okay. Now comes piping. What we are going to do is Pipe right onto this parchment paper. I make them to be about two to three centimeters in size. Now your macaron batter will spread out slightly, so you might wanna pipe them out a little bit smaller than you think you need. The tip is probably like a centimeter in diameter. You just want a small tip and you want to just do it in a straight motion and pull away. So pipe down and pull away. Now we're going to be banging this pan on the counter. About 10 times, 
Hitting it underneath. Couple times. Okay, what that does is gets a lot of the air bubbles out. What I'm quickly going to be doing is popping some with this toothpick and swirling it if you have some air bubbles that haven't come out. That should take you about a minute or so. You don't have to be perfect and these don't have to be perfect. If you want the shells to look precise and to be the exact same size, you can actually trace circles on the back of your parchment paper, flip it over and then pipe it out. I just do everything by eye and sort of match up each macaron shell at the end. Now after we've banged these all out and removed any of the air bubbles, another important step is that this has to sit for 30 minutes at room temperature before these go into the oven. What happens in the 30 minutes is that the macarons form a shell. Right now I can't touch these because they're way too sticky, but in 30 minutes I'll be able to lightly touch these and they won't stick to my finger. That means a shell has been formed so that when these go into the oven, they will rise and create that perfect little macaron foot that we all know and love. So I'll see you guys in 30 minutes. In the meantime, I'm just going to clean up a bit. After I clean up, I would say maybe 10 minutes or so would have passed and then I'm going to be turning my oven on. It is important for the oven to be on at 335 degrees Fahrenheit. This is just the temperature that I find works best when it comes to baking my macarons for about 12 to even 13 minutes. My heat source comes from the very top, so I don't want to cook these too close to the top or too close to the bottom, right in between usually works best. Play around with your oven because everyone's oven is different. Ovens can be quite difficult, so that can also be your downfall when it comes to making macarons. The macarons just went in the oven after sitting out for 30 minutes to develop a skin. Since every time you pipe the macarons, you need to leave them for 30 minutes before you place them in the oven, I'm going to begin by piping the next batch up. Wow, to say these look perfect is an understatement. They are absolutely beautiful. They were in the oven for 12 minutes and they look fantastic. As you can see, the tops are not cracked or crinkly or anything. They are perfectly set. They have these little perfect, beautiful feet that were not spread out too much or too little. Now what I'm going to do is let these cool in the pan for about five minutes or so. Now that these macarons have come to room temperature and they've cooled off, I'm going to take them off of this and they should come off very easily and set them on this tray. You just want to lightly lift the pressure paper and pop it off. So I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing and I'm going to be piping them out, letting them sit, putting them in the oven, and so on and so forth. But of course we need to make a filling for these macarons because you can't just eat them like this, they need a filling. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how to make a basic chocolate ganache. It is so simple and so delicious, you're going to love it. I'm also going to be teaching you how to make the most basic buttercream. It is just a simple buttercream, so you have two options, a chocolate ganache and a buttercream, and you can decide what you like best. So what I'm going to be doing is making a very basic and easy ganache. This ganache is going to be the filling for the macarons, so all we need are equal parts cream and chocolate. So I'm just using a semi-sweetened chocolate chips. So to half a cup of cream, which is about 115 grams, I added 115 grams of chocolate, which ends up being about three-fourths of a cup. You also can add, this is optional, but a little pinch of salt towards the end. We'll get to that later. So what we are going to do is add this half a cup or 115 grams of heavy cream to this pot. Now what we're going to do is take this saucepan and put it over about a medium heat until it comes to a nice simmer. While the cream is bubbling, you can quickly just add a little bit of salt to your chocolate. So the cream has just come to a boil without it boiling over, of course. I'm just going to pour this cream right on top of the chocolate. So leave this for about a minute or two, and then when the chocolate is nice and melty, it should be so much easier to stir and turn into a nice chocolatey ganache. So now it's time to give this a quick mix. And as you can see, the chocolate and the cream are becoming a ganache right before our eyes. So continue to mix that until everything is combined. It should look nice and thick and beautiful. This ganache is of course great to pour over a cake if we had one, but we want this as a filling for our macarons. So what we have to do is cover this with plastic wrap and place this in the fridge for maybe about an hour until the chocolate sets. Okay, so I have some room temperature butter. 
It is kind of cubed. I diced it up into small pieces. This is salted butter. If you don't have salted butter, you can add just, I guess, a quarter to an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. What I'm going to be doing is creaming up this butter a bit and then eventually adding some icing sugar. This is going to be making a basic butter cream that I'm going to spice up by adding a rose flavor, which I'll show you in a second. So let's get this going. Let's whisk this for about a minute or two. Okay, so now that the quarter of a cup of butter is lightly creamed, we are going to be adding the sugar. Now what we need is about a cup to two cups of icing sugar. I'm going to start with a cup, add half a cup, taste it, and then see how much more we need. So let's first add the cup of icing sugar, and then we're going to give that a mix to combine. You basically need about a tablespoon to two of liquid, so what I'm going to be doing right now is adding about a tablespoon of rose water right in the mix. I'm giving that a quick mix. Now I'm going to be adding another half a cup of icing sugar. I'm giving that a mix again on a medium to low speed. Okay, now that everything looks nice and creamy, what I'm going to be doing is adding a tablespoon of rose syrup. I basically made my own rose syrup with the rose water. If you guys want a recipe on that, just let me know. But you can also purchase a rose syrup online. So just a tablespoon right to the mix and we're going to give it a final little spin. Okay, now this buttercream is done. You could of course have just used some cream and vanilla extract to make a basic vanilla buttercream. I just wanted to make a rose buttercream since I do have these pretty pink colored macarons. I will of course be including this recipe, the ganache recipe, and the macaron recipe over on my blog at ladolcealisa.com. I will link that down below in this video, so check out the description box for the recipe. I'm just going to be putting this buttercream in the fridge for maybe like 15 to 20 minutes just to set up. It is already pretty much ready to pipe but I like to keep it in the fridge for a little bit longer that way it is nice and firm and it's not runny on us so I'll be right back so I took that rose buttercream out of the fridge and I placed it in this piping bag now I am ready to pipe it in my macarons as you can see I've paired them all up since I'm not doing exactly perfectly piped macarons, some of them are a little bit bigger and smaller, so I tried to match them up accordingly. Now what I'm going to be doing is just piping this rose buttercream in one side of the macaron. So what we're doing is going to be squeezing this out and piping just a dollop right in the middle. You wanna be quite generous with the filling, I would say. This recipe makes basically 35 filled macarons or about 70 shells. So I find that this amount of buttercream and the amount of ganache that I'll be using is going to be pretty perfect for the filling. So after this is piped, what we are going to be doing is placing the shell on top and pressing down on the macaron, just lightly. I'm going to be placing these beautiful filled rose buttercream macarons in a plastic Tupperware container. You can use any container really, but they must be placed and sealed tightly and they need to go into the fridge before you can eat them for 24 hours. One day, can you believe it? I know. It is very important that you don't eat these macarons today. You must wait one full day because the texture and everything, it just comes together and it is the perfect bite. Right now, if I were to bite into this, it would be way too chewy. The perfect macaron should technically melt in your mouth. These set perfectly in the fridge when you place them in a container and you don't touch them for 24 hours. I'm going to be popping these macarons in the fridge and I'm going to be getting out that chocolate ganache to pipe up my last few macarons. So now I have my chocolate ganache all ready to go. I placed it in this disposable piping bag so that I could throw it away after. But now we are going to basically be doing the same thing as we did with the buttercream. So we're just going to be piping a dollop right in the center. So with all these beautiful filled macarons, these have the semi-sweet chocolate ganache with a little bit of salt to make it sort of a salted chocolate flavor. These look so beautiful and they are quite filled. I guess I like my macarons to be more like the Pierre Hermé filling or they're literally bursting with filling. So I'm just going to be placing these in this container and like I said, these go in the fridge for 24 hours. Okay, so I have both sets of macarons in the fridge. Some sort of magic happens in the fridge in that 24 hours and it makes the macaron, the two shells, sort of melt together with that buttercream or ganache and it sort of really truly becomes like one cookie. The shell will be slightly crisp but the interior will be so melty and delicious. I promise you guys, you're going to love them. So I'm back and I'm finally ready 
ready to eat these macarons. Like I said, they need at least 24 hours in the fridge before you can have a bite. And then right as you're about to, you should let them come up to room temperature for at least half an hour. You don't want to eat them when they're super cold, even though they will still be good. But I'm going to give these a taste. So what should I taste first? Let's go with the rose buttercream filling. The shell is basically the same throughout. However, the macarons get their flavor from the filling. So let's try this beautiful rose buttercream that I made. Super simple. Mmm, that rose buttercream is so delicious and it's just so nicely flavored with rose essence. It's great. And what is really important to talk about is the cookie, of course. The macaron shell itself, it is so tender and like melt in your mouth. It has that crisp shell exterior and the inside just gets to be so smooth. It sort of melts and truly becomes one cookie as opposed to like two cookie sandwich with cream in the middle. And now let's try the chocolate one, chocolate ganache. I'm such a chocolate lover, so I already know that I'm going to love this. But let's give this a taste. The ganache was so easy to make. Mmm. Even more melt in your mouth. Wow. Mm -mm. That ganache is delicious. It is made with the semi-sweet chocolate, so it's not so overly sweet. It complements perfectly with this nice, soft, beautiful macaron cookie as you guys can see i mean this is really how a macaron should taste like you should never bite into one and have a go or it should never be so chewy that you're like struggling to bite through it it should just be so soft and slightly crisp guys the shell is perfection the filling is delicious i wanted to keep this recipe super simple and easy for you guys i mean of course there's nothing simple about making a macarons but i tried to be as thorough as possible like i said the recipe will be on my blog post i'm going to further explain everything in detail it honestly helps to watch things and visualize and also read them as well so hopefully you guys can be successful when it comes to making the macarons if you like this recipe i will of course come at you again with more macaron videos in the future with really inventive and creative fillings as well please don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe to my channel especially if you found this video useful and informative so anyways guys thank you so much for watching and of course i will see you in my next video happy baking